A lot of people have asked me uh, the best way to go about these questions, which are basically just a synthesis question. And I don't really know how to answer it other than say you, you, you have to know the reactions. But you can think about what's going on. So let's take a look at uh, 3A. There's three arrows, so that tells you that there's three different reactions, if you will. Now, we want to be a little careful because this last one, workup, that's typically when we work up a reaction. And in this case, this reaction uh, so we'll, doesn't really go to completion because we have to protonate everything. So what's going on here? Uh, well, in the first arrow, we just see magnesium. And I told you dry ether and solvent. Hopefully that kicks you into think about what we're doing here is making a Grignard reagent. Uh, how do we know that? Well, we, we kind of have to remember the only time we use magnesium really in any reactions, uh, either in 2513 or 2533, is in the Grignard reaction. The other thing that might help you is you very rarely see uh, metals if they're not taking part in doing something. In this case, magnesium would dearly love to become magnesium 2 plus and it ends up giving up some electrons and when it does that uh, it gives us two electrons one goes to the bromine to become kind of a bromide and the other goes to the carbon to become kind of like a carbon ion so maybe that'll kick you into recalling that this makes the in this case the phenyl magnesium bromide and we talk about the reactivity of that as acting very much like a carbon ion so this is our nucleophile. This becomes our nucleophile. It's a, in the next reaction, it will be the nucleophile and it will attack the carbonyl carbon. And in this case, we get that simple uh, addition. Now that will make the alkoxide, which will end up being fairly stable because of the magnesium. And we have to work everything up to get the final product. And the final product in this case, is simply this alcohol. So these two carbons came from the acetone, our phenyl ring, our carbanion, our phenyl anion, I suppose, attacks the carbonyl carbon, and that's this carbon right here. And when we finally work it up, we get uh, this tertiary alcohol. And, you know, we can remember maybe that Grignard reagents. First of all, as soon as we see magnesium, we want to remember Grignard reagents. And then we can remember that Grignard reagents react with uh, ketones to give tertiary alcohols. The next reaction, uh, we really uh, just have to remember that primary amines react with carbonyl compounds uh, by attacking the carbonyl compound and then what happens depends on what it is and in the case of aldehydes and ketones uh, we end up forming an imine so you can think about the nitrogen that's our nucleophilic species adds to this carbon and then in the case of amines we end up losing the elements of water Two of the protons come from here, and the oxygen comes from here, and we end up with this compound. This just comes from the carbonyl compound. This was our carbonyl carbon, but it's no longer a carbonyl carbon. We now, that nitrogen attacked and ended up, it becomes the nitrogen that is there. And I'm just doing this to make it look better as a drawing. What I would say is the one common mistake that happened here, and just to make it smaller, oops, I'm going to put phenyl instead of the, the ring there so it all fits. The most common mistake in this uh, compound, most people actually did remember that it was an imine, but they didn't count their carbons, and they had the phenyl bonded directly to the nitrogen. They lost this benzylic carbon. 
C, how do we do C? Well, uh, if you take a look at the first question, I actually gave you a bit of a hint here. I showed uh, that big compound uh, with the SOCl bonded to a carbon. It eliminated to give a acid chloride uh, in question one. That was to remind you that this is the reagent that reacts to give a acid chloride when we react it with a carboxylic acid. And we know that uh, carboxylic acid chlorides are very reactive and react with alcohols to form esters. So this is simply going to be the ester. This, I think, was probably the... Most people caught this. A few people couldn't remember. So this alcohol then reacts with uh, the carboxylic acid chloride at the carbonyl compound and displaces the OH, or the, I'm sorry, the chloride, and ending up getting the ester. Now here, this is a little bit, uh, you know, those of you who remember the Vidic, the only time we've seen Oops. The only time we've seen triphenylphosphine uh, and an alkyl chloride was in the Vitic reaction. So how do we work this out? Again, we use the fact that we have three arrows here. So our first reaction must involve these two species uh, to form something here that then reacts with this. Well, Maybe you could remember that phosphorus is nucleophilic, has a pair of electrons. It will just displace this by an SN2 type of reaction and form a bond there and kick out the chloride so that we get the uh, alkyl phosphidium cation. Uh, so we have a positive charge on the phosphorus. And then uh, we have a carbon here with two protons attached to it. We talked about the fact that uh, the day before, I actually gave this reaction where a Grignard can act as a base, and I specifically did the Wittig reaction where the Grignard was acting as the base. And that's what happens next is that this CH3 pulls off a, a proton to give us the anion here, and the phosphorus will have the positive charge, and that's our Wittig reagent, and it adds to this carbon of the carbonyl, remember the carbonyl carbon in a Wittig reaction becomes part of the carbon-carbon double bond in the product. So the product for this reaction is simply this one, two, three because they came from here, one, two, three, and this carbon is the carbon that will become the other side of the double bond in the Wittig reaction. And finally, I was surprised uh, that so many people had difficulty with this particular problem because it really is just uh, an alcohol reacting with an aldehyde to form an acetal, and in this case, it is a cyclic acetal most people got this one the one mistake a lot of people lost this carbon atom so there we go that's how we do question four I will rem I'm sorry question three uh, I will remind you to take a look at question one. There were a lot of hints in question one. There was a hint here for this one, reminding you that the Grignard reagent can act as a base. Uh, there was a hint here in question one, reminding you that you get acid chlorides from SOCl2. Uh, there was a hint here where we had... Uh, formation of an imine, uh, and yeah, there we go.